So, a couple of days ago, I went to see Finding Dory, and it took me a while to get to this review because, first of all, I didn't have really that much time, and second of all, I had to think of, like, what I would score the movie. So, when it comes to Finding Nemo, I absolutely love it. Like, we have, like, a lot of the merchandise. Like, I'm even wearing one of the shirts right now. I got this on my cruise. Someone forgot to wear it to the movie. I don't know how. My sister wore hers, though. So, yeah, so I love Finding Nemo, and, it was, and I really grew up with it. So, when I heard that they were planning a sequel, I was really excited for it. And But then when I found out that we would have to wait until 2016, I thought that would be a really long time. But then I, I also had a bit of my doubts over this one. Like, even in my Pixar sequel wait rant, I said this, like, I'll pull up a clip right now. But I will warn you, I sound a lot younger. What I'm worried about for Finding Dory next year is that it might be disappointing waiting 13 years. But I'm sure it'll be good, but there's absolutely no way it's going to get, like, the as good as Finding Nemo was. So, now that Pixar has finally gave in to Ellen's idea and made a Finding Nemo sequel, will this film be worth the wait and meet my expectations and go into the great Pixar sequels or will it prove that we overhyped and end up in the not so good sequels? Well, you're about to find out on this episode of Magical Reviews. So when I first heard of the plot, I kind of thought that the title of Finding Dory didn't really make sense because it's more like Finding Dory's family, but they do have to find Dory at at some point in the movie, so the title kind of makes sense now that I've seen it. So yeah, so yeah, Dory is trying to find her family and then she has to um, deal with her memory loss thing, and she has to kind of overcome it, and it really affects her journey. So, the, but the only thing is, doesn't this plot sound a little bit like, oh, I don't know, the last film that they made? Yeah, so, basically it's the same thing here as in The Good Dinosaur, where, whereas in The Good Dinosaur, Arliss overcome, like, his fears of, like, storms and heights and stuff. Where, which he does by constantly screaming every five minutes. But, yeah, but that's not the point. And here, though, it's told a lot better, though, because, like, in The Good Dinosaur, it wasn't really that effective on who the characters were or, like, who the story was. It was just Arlo is scared, and that's it. But in here, you can really feel it. Like, you can really feel what Dory's going through, and it, they told it really well with all the flashbacks and stuff and like how she can never seem to remember stuff and it affects her journey to find mom and dad so yeah it was told much better here and it was told amazingly well I'm not gonna spoil it but one part um where Marlin and Nemo like Nemo says like we have to we have to think about what would Dory do and then they come up with, Pixar came up with some really creative stuff there. So yeah, it's kind of like Finding Nemo where the plot isn't the most original original thing, but it's really the creativity and the execution of it that make it work. And also stick around to the end of the credits because there's something cool at the end. That's all I'm going to say. So, we all know how great um, Finding Nemo's animation looked back in the day, and it still holds up pretty well today, but what Pixar did here with Finding Dory is nothing short of perfect. All The character movements are very smooth, 
especially with Hank, they made it really, they made him really creative since he's he doesn't have limbs. So they were really able to uh, like experiment with like his movements and stuff, and it makes it look amazing. The water looks amazing, and it looks almost real. Well, it actually does look real. And one part, um, like there's the humans. One, at one part with the humans, I actually thought that the film there was in live action. It looked so good. Everything is awesome. That really sounded like that really sounded like the Lego movie right there. Yeah, but everything looks amazing. Character animation, the different environments, it all looks so awesome. So even underwater, you can kind of tell that they put in lots of creativity because like there's. Like, especially in the scenes with Bailey, like, the, um, I think it's, like, a, some sort of whale. I don't know what kind, but, like, the scenes where he's using echolocation, it looks really, it looks very creative, and it really captures what I think echolocation would look like. Yeah. Yeah, even in the short film that precedes the movie, the birds look almost realistic. They are so good. Like, imagine like what I said about like the Jungle Book or Hop with the uh, animations and stuff. I think this outshines it by like a lot. Well, Hop for sure. I don't know about the Jungle Book, maybe. I can't really decide which one's better. So, but then again, they are two different mediums because there's like the live action and the animation. But s still. Even in the short film, Pixar still put in as much effort in the animation as in here. And both look so good. And also, how, how Pixar will find a way to top this, I have no idea. So, the characters here. So, first of all, Dory. Um, for this film, having... The comic relief as the main character, it worked much better than the last time they tried this. Now let's go back to the characters. So first of all, we have Dory, and she's now the main character, and like I said, it worked much better than the last time they attempted this, with like a, a comic relief being a main character. So, yeah, now it, instead of Marlin, like, looking for Nemo is Dory looking for her parents. So it's like the roles are reversed. So she has a lot more depth and development though instead of just being like the forgetful fish comic relief person like or fish in this case. She's more the one who's like well like I said she's the main character but she's like more passionate about finding her family and we would see like a lot of her flashbacks like I may have mentioned before and like, she really works good as a character. Even if you didn't like her in the first one, well, I liked her a lot in the first one. I think in here, though, she's much better. And then Marlin and Nemo aren't really in it as much as you would think. And Nemo is voiced by a different actor. And if, if you, like, have watched ne Fighting Nemo a lot, then you might be able to tell. I'll just pull up a clip from of Nemo from each movie to see if you can tell the difference. I kind of did. So here's Nemo in 2003. So, which one is it? I'm from the ocean. Ah, the ocean. The ocean! And here's what Nemo sounds like now. Dad, Dory sleeps with me. Although, first things first, I you can't really tell that much. And also, I can't really fault Pixar for doing this, because the old actor is in his 20s. So... It kind of does make sense that they would have to find someone else to do it. And plus, the important thing is that it still sounds pretty close. Although, to keep the spirit of the original, they did put the old voice actor in there somewhere. <clears throat> you won't really be able to tell if it, that it's him, though, because he's going to sound different. Since he probably hit puberty a long time ago. But, I, di I didn't catch it, but you'll you can... L look for it in the credits, or you can just look up online the name of the old voice actor. I think it's like Alexander Gould or something. And then the the like the so like the sea lions like they're 
um, they're pretty funny, like, especially that one guy who has that creepy smile, he's like, yeah, like, I think his name's Gerald, and I forget what the other two are named, but they're pretty funny. She's like, um, she's almost like, um, Nigel, I think his name is, in the first one, who, like, transports Marlin and Dory, except I think now it's just Mar it's Marlin and Nemo. And so, so like, oh, some of the characters are, like, the, are, like, just replacements of other ones. Like, as Animat says, the the sea lions are a replacement for the um, tank gang from the first one. And, like, Destiny and Bailey, like, or maybe they were, no, I think he said that Destiny and Bailey were, like, replacements for the tank gang. So, like, Destiny is, like, Dory's, like, old friend, and she helps a bit with the journey, and she's pretty funny. Then Bailey, he's also pretty funny, and he uses echolocation to help Dory out to find out where Marlin and Nemo are. And so, like, yeah, and that, like I said before, the echolocation thing is really creative. Considering that whales actually do that. So, yeah, the character. And then, like, there's Hank. He's, he's awesome. Like, he might be the strongest character, like, besides maybe Dory. I'm not sure. I, I, I would have to kind of think of, th about it. But he's awesome. And like I said, his animations are very creative and fun. And I may have said this before also, but, like, his mouth is, like, actually, like, on the bottom, like, where... Where, like, it would actually be on an octopus or a septopus in this case. So, yeah, he's the one who's, like, who seems like a tough guy, but he, he's really actually soft on the inside. And he's just lovable. And his camouflage thing is amazing. So, yeah, there's more characters. Yeah, like, that one that lady, like, that voice lady thing at the Marine Life Institute. So, yeah... Well, um, not as many characters would return or show up as much as you would expect. The ones that they do give us are highly lovable and amazing. And before I go on to the rankings, I'm going to say my waiting definitely paid off.